So I'm just checking that the, uh, the case fits back onto the board without any problems. Uh, there's some, a couple of little dents here and uh, it's, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see, but it's super tight in there. So I'm just going to uh, knock this out a bit just to make sure that I've got clearance to the board underneath. Right, so I've uh, straightened out this little dent here. In fact, it's come up a little bit. But I'm still really worried about the edge of the board along this edge here between these two marks. So I'm going to try and bring that out a bit just to make sure that there's, there's some space. There we go. So I've managed to uh, batter that along there so that it sticks out that way. And then I was able to get a torch or a light in, in here and then just have a look down that way. And I saw like a shadow along the end there. So that's how I think that it's now clear. So uh, another job job. So here can we can see the EME and uh, in all its glory. These are the 12 volt outputs from the DC to DC charger. So I'm going to have a look and see if I can get this out. Right, so let's have a little chat about what it is that I am actually far arsing about with. Uh, right, so uh, we've got the inverter from the i3, uh, but really the bit that I need to uh, communicate and to send power to the motor is this end. Okay, so uh, we've got the uh, RGBTs and the board there to do with the RGBTs and uh, the capacitor, I guess, is in here. Um, I'll have to look back through, um, I think it was Damien Maguire's video on these, or it might have been the Johannes Hübner uh, videos. Um, over this side, this is the DC to DC converter. So this takes the high voltage from the high voltage battery, 400 volts-ish, and that takes it down to 12 volts and then uh, sends it out here and here uh, to go off and to, uh, I think this one's for the heater, I think this one's for the um, AC pump and that goes to the KLE. So um, then on the connection at the top here on the casing there was a 12 volt off to the battery. So because of the packaging issues I'm having with the Mini, if I can get this part on top of the motor in the engine bay turned at 90 degrees and then dropped down a bit, I might have room for some batteries in the front. So what I'm going to try and do is look at taking the DC to DC converter part out and then looking to see whether I can repackage this this end here into into something else or maybe a cut down version of this box here um, lots of things to think about we've got coolant going in here uh, so you know I just got to strip it down first of all see what I've got see what I need and see where I can put it right so uh, DC to DC converter I'm just having a look at this. I, I don't think I needed to take all of these out, so I'm gonna, probably going to have to put those back in. But we've got these ones here, these little bolts around here. Okay, go all the way around. I can get to those easy enough. Um, there's a couple of awkward ones around the back there. Um, there's quite an awkward one just there. So I'm going to have to try and move this out of the way, but I think I'll be able to do that. Okay. Now, there is, if you can see, there's one in here just underneath there. So I'm trying to work out how I'm going to get to that, which means moving this and uh, it, it won't move. I'm taking all these bolts out around here. The capacitor itself lifts up, but this goes down. So it looks like I might have to um, get the lid back on and then flip it up the other way and then take the cover underneath off so um let's have a look at that
Right, so I've taken the uh, reverse side cover off and uh, we'll get to have a bit of a look underneath now, all the gubbins that we've got underneath here. So these are the connectors I think that are causing me the problems on the other side. So um, I'm going to have a little fiddle around, maybe take these two screws out. Flip it back over and then see if that allows me to, to pull that capacitor out. Yeah, right, well, I just wasted all my time. So all I needed to do was uh, undo that. Whoopsie. Uh, thankfully, I didn't waste my time uh, because I took those two bolts under there. I can now remove this piece out of the way and get to the last bolt. It's around about this point when I started to realise I was trying to take out the DC to DC charger, but I didn't actually need to. What I need to do is take out all the inverter parts and try and find a box for them to fit in. Right, everybody, please excuse the camera. It is busted, uh, so there'll be a mixture of iPad footage, knackered old phone footage, and hopefully some GoPro footage as well. So uh, that's nice. So what we're looking at here is obviously the, uh, we're still on the inverter and I'm just stripping it all down. I'm stripping out the inverter parts. I've decided to leave the DC to DC charger parts in the casing and take out what I actually need. The case is too big to go in the mini anyway, in the position that I want it to go. So what I'm going to look at now is take out the bits I need and see if I can get a box made up that will fit exactly what I need in it in the orientation that I need it uh, in a much smaller, neater package. So uh, I'm just going to carry on taking these bits out. So as we can see here, we've got the electric motor electronics, uh, which houses the DC to DC charger and the inverter. So I'm just going to take all of the parts I need for the inverter out just to show you how much room they actually take up. Right so if you're ready here we go this is as we know the Hoopner board so that can go over there move that out of the way uh, this, we've got this little plate that sits beneath the board protecting the board beneath it now we can take off this casing, which is protecting the capacitor. And what can we get next? Let's take this bit out. These are the connectors, which go down to the motor. board there. Now this was a bit tricky. These bolts here, they're uh, thread locked in, so they are really tight. And then under here is a tiny little board and you have to take the cardboard off, which I can't do one handed. And then you notice that there's some screws and they go into these holes here. So there's two screws holding that board in place. So that can go over there. And this part. over there and there we can see this is where the uh, where the coolant comes in to help keep uh, everything cool and actually coolant runs under this plate as well so we're going to have to think about cooling uh, but if we see there when you consider that uh, that goes on top of that that is sort of next to it that way like that Oh, that goes in there, that goes like that, this one goes here, this, I think that's the orientation, sits like that, then we've got that board, and then this sits vertically. All of a sudden, from there, we've got a really nice little neat package.
I've just got to house it. So we'll think about that. Dad's coming over in a bit, so I'll ask him what he can do, what he thinks. So if I can house that on top of the motor in the correct orientation, nice and low down, then I should be able to fit two batteries onto the uh, bulkhead of the Mini above all of this. And then that gives me some good weight distribution, some good uh, weight over the front wheels, and that means I can get all my batteries in where I want them to without having to cut any of the Mini apart. So, fingers crossed. Right, okay, so here we have uh, the main sort of top part that uh, sticks out at the top of the inverter casing. Uh, here, this is the DC that comes in from the battery and then goes through all the gubbins on the side to get converted into three-phase AC, which then gets controlled down to the motor. Uh, this side is more to do with the DC to DC charger. Okay, so we've got um, connection down to the uh, KLE. We've got uh, a positive and negative connection to the 12 volt battery, which is at the front of the car. Um, and then underneath, an awful lot of this, as we can see, is all in one uh, part. So I don't really want to faff around with that. These leads that come up here, they're basically like a safety device. So if this connector here, if this uh, locking connector is out, it breaks the continuity of that circuit. So then, uh, so then the the car knows that the connection's not in properly. Okay, so that's a bit of a safety thing. Uh, so I might take some of these bits off, but what I need to uh, I need to investigate really is what housing I can use to put the parts in that I need to put in. Okay, so we'll just go through those briefly as well in a sec. Right, so this is uh, an inverter controller. Uh, this is on the Rex, okay, so that's the range extender, which uh, for those of you that don't know, that is a petrol engine, which is used as a generator to provide uh, additional um, charge to the batteries to help uh, extend the range of the car. So for example, my car, I get a range of between 60 and 80 miles, depending on the outside temperature. Uh, but this can add another 80 to 90 miles um, that the range extender can. Um, this in itself doesn't have the power that I want in the Mini, but this could be used in a conversion for something like maybe a you know fast motorcycle, um, something that doesn't quite need the power that I'm going for. Um, so I did have a look at this. It's got a lot of benefits to it. I, you can use this as your uh, three-phase output. We've got a input, you know, like a data CAN bus type situation here that you can get all your information in. We also have the same type of high voltage socket which could be used. Um, and most importantly, we've got cooling, okay? So that's a nice little unit. Uh, but don't think it's going to be suitable for me because when we start looking at the size of the items that I would want to house, then it's just not going to be good enough. You've got to bear in mind that I need to call the bottom of this. And I also need, oops, dropped a screw. I also need cooling under here as well. So, um, as you can see, if I needed to fit one of these in, it would be fine, because it would go that way. I can't put them one on top of the other because of the fact that I need the cooling, although, you know, could have worked if I didn't need that. Um, but basically this unit is just not gonna be big enough for all the parts that I need. So I think that's off to eBay. So I think I'm gonna have to wrap this video up. And in the next video, we are going to strip down the KLE and try and see if I can make room to put all my gubbins for the inverter in there.